today I wanted to talk about something that's really important and near and dear to my heart. I um, was talking to my husband yesterday. We were just so proud of our kids. They've been really handling this like champs and probably even better than we've been handling it, <laughs> to be honest. And I uh, was chatting with him about how much we just love our kids and how being locked down together has actually brought us closer as a family and how absolutely lucky we are for, for that. I just want to pinch myself because I don't believe that this is my life. And the, the reason that I don't believe it's my life is, um, you know, I, I didn't always have this. I didn't always have this wonderful family dynamic. And um, it's certainly not something I grew up with. And I started talking to my husband yesterday about our oldest daughter, who's nine, and she's probably the most aware of what's going on from all of our all of our kids, right? So we have three three little girls, nine, seven, and five years old. And Avery, who's our nine year old, is probably the most aware of, you know, the the stress and the anxiety and the fear and the sadness and the loss and what this virus really means to a lot of people. And I was chatting with with my husband and I kind of blurted out out of nowhere. I said, you know, if I, if thank God this didn't happen when I was Avery's age, because I may not have survived it. And as soon as those words left my lips, I started to get really sad because it's, it's true. I had chills thinking about my life as a nine-year-old and uh, being in quarantine during a pandemic in an abusive household, I don't know if I would have been able to survive that. And so I, I started to think about everybody else that's out there. You know, I feel blessed and lucky that my family is surviving this. We're thriving in this, this hard situation. But from a mental health perspective, how, how is this affecting other children? other children that are living with parents that, you know, may not, they might be abusive to them, or they might, you know, a single mom or a dad who just lost his job, um, someone who can't afford rent or, or groceries or caregivers who are taking care of elderly people or a business owner who lost everything or, um, you know, the, the caregivers that can't even be there with someone while they're while they're sick and dying. So I was filled with this immense amount of gratitude, but then also this heavy, heavy sadness for all the people out there that don't have what I have, or that aren't as lucky as I am at this particular time. And I think about our our needs during this time, and it's not just our physical needs. So obviously I'm a healthy chef and and so I focus on that gut and that um, the healing of your body. But what about our, our soul and our heart and that mind-gut connection? And how, how are we caring for that? And how are we caring for other people who might be not necessarily less fortunate than us, but just in a different situation? They don't have the same perspective. They don't have a big house in a nice backyard where the kids can run around free. Um, they don't have a solid relationship with their spouse. They don't have siblings um, to or family to depend on. They don't have a healthy body and they don't have a strong mind. So today is, is Mental Health Monday and it's a really important day for me, as I've mentioned, from my personal experience growing up in not the mental wellness that I would have, that I want, and I, I fight for for my, my own children. Um, but I, you know, I struggled for years, for decades, with depression, anxiety, and right now that is all heightened. It's, it's escalated, it's, it's out of control. So for Mental Health Monday, 
I have a challenge for you because you might feel like you need help. And the best way we're going to, we're going to kill two birds with one stone, which I hate that analogy. Does anybody have any better analogies than kill two birds with one stone? Why are we killing birds? Anyway, so one challenge for today, one small hinge change that will help in two ways. So by helping other people, by reaching out to other people, which is what the challenge is today, reach out to one person that you think might benefit from you just being a good friend, for you being there for them, for you reaching out to them, for you just saying, hey, I'm here, I'm going through the same thing. You know, they're, they're probably, if they're depressed and they're sad and they're lonely, they have anxiety, uh, they're not gonna reach out to you. They're not gonna be like, hey, Lindsay, over here, I need your help. So reach out to someone. It doesn't necessarily have to be a best friend. It could be someone that's an acquaintance. It could be someone that you feel might be in a worse off situation than you or may not have the perspective or the resources or the help um, that you have. And so by reaching out to someone and helping someone not only are you helping them but by doing something good for someone else it automatically makes you feel good and by you feeling good it it starts this upward spiral that is really a wonderful thing to have starting at the beginning of a week i always try to set my intentions for the week for the day for my meetings, for my live streams, for everything that I, I do, I set my intention, what do I want? And what I want for this week is I want to work with you in partnership with you to help others and to start that ripple effect. Because if you drop a pebble into a placid lake, right? And all of that, all of that good energy just trickles out, it ripples out. It's kind of the same thing that you're doing today and this week. You're going to reach out to someone, you're going to help someone, you're going to be there for someone. You're gonna be a sounding board, just listen to them. And in turn, that will help you, that will help everybody that that person is involved in in their own life. And that mind, heart, soul connection is also going to help you with your gut. You're going to feel better and by feeling better you're going to start to feel good and by feeling good and then even better than that and the more you help people and the more you help yourself and the better you feel it's just going to keep to grow keep growing it's going to keep that ripple effect going so that is mental health monday with lindsay o'neill small hinges dot health episode 18 you can visit the website small hinges dot health for the first 17 of these videos. And once I get to 20, I'm gonna start um, a new page because it's getting a little long to scroll. But I, I also want you to know that I'm thinking of you. And in everything that I do and all of the work that I've done on myself and all of the pain that I've gone through in my life, it gives me purpose. The pain gives me purpose. And your pain will eventually give you purpose too. So I want to leave you with that. Have a wonderful day. I love you. And I will see you tomorrow.